All right, Shalom, Michael. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. I'd like to say Shalom to the elect that's teaching his word in all true faith and sincerity. And today, I just want to get into a lesson how Esau faith is, is going to is pretty much is World War Three. That's his destiny. This this pretty much where the road ends with him. World War Three. In the scriptures outline that you know this man uh, is coming and how he's gonna go out. You know, Yahweh Shimon you know, have built Esau which is the so-called white man up as this superpower that you see today. You know, this man, his technology, uh, the witchcraft, you know, it's set up to where there's nothing earthly you can do to overthrow him. It's gonna be a decree from the heaven that dictates this man um, uh, violent, uh, overthrow and one of those things the Lord is going to use is World War 3 man which is biblical matter of fact let's start off with this in the book of Revelation the 6th chapter let's Revelation chapter 6 and it's not like you can't say World War 3 is a shot from the hill just that term World War you know, it already happened before. As well as uh, now, it's even the, the weapons have advanced even more to where this war will be even more devastating. But this is Revelation 6 in verse 4. It reads, And there went out another horse that was red. So it said, Another horse that went out was red. And that red is an indicator. That's talking about Esau so-called white man that one it was his time to shine so to speak and why I said it, uh, it says matter of fact continue and power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth see so this man all this man also is known as the sword in certain cases when you read uh, Psalm the 17th chapter but also this man's blessing matter of fact let's get that in the book of Genesis the 27th chapter because that's you know when that power was given to him but it came in effect during the time of the Greeks and Romans and especially what you see today, that blessing has been perfected in this lifetime. That's why you got tanks. You got drones all the way up to these missiles, man. But that was the blessing of Esau. Genesis 27, verse 41. And it's like verse 40. Genesis 20, 27 and verse 40 it reads and by thy sword shall thou live and shall, and shall serve thy brother and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have a dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck so the scripture says and by thy sword shall thou live see this is part of the blessings of Esau he was that was his blessing that's why the so-called white man the Lord put the spirit on him you know especially when his back was against the wall against the natives the Lord put the spirit on this man to come up you know with the Gatling gun you know under this devil he pretty much revolutionized war fighter jets and shit that's why Revelation in the ninth chapter outlines you know those dog fighters those planes in World War One. You know, they call that the Great War because, you know, a lot of technology was used. It revolutionized how war would be fought, you know? 
So who else would make this scene make sense concerning taking peace from the earth, war on a global scale, than the so-called white man? Why? Because that was his blessing. He was given that sword because it was that time. For, it was that time. Matter of fact, let's get something real quick in the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 it reads to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven see and that season takes place under different kingdoms and rulerships empires that's what these certain purposes play out when you go when you look up historical events you got to gauge about what empire what regime was ruling during that time. Yeah, you can pinpoint 7 AD easily, you know, because you you know you got to go back to the Roman Empire. You know, you look at certain events. It, it depends on what regime you go by. What regime was ruling? Because that was the season it was set forth to take place. You know, so jump down, but jump down to verse eight. It reads a time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. So it's a season for these things to unfold. But it happened during a certain empire, a certain rulership. Just like that time of war, it was under the season of Esau, the so-called white man. That's why under his watch, under his rule, it was a thing called world wars. When you had these all these nations involved, fighting on multiple continents. Well, now we at World War Three. This is what we had in this process, but this is the war to end our war. So going back to uh, going back to uh, Revelation, the sixth chapter, <clears throat> Revelation six and verse four, it reads, "And there went out another horse that was red." See. And that's time out E when it was his time when that when that season when you know that season called for war which was the end time Esau was called up the Lord set him up for this moment it says the power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another see those world wars even these proxy wars even up to the day, you got two Edomites opposing superpowers, but they're Edomites. The Americans and the Russians. They're going to kill one another. By the way of World War Three. It says, And there was given unto him a great sword. And we just read who was whose blessing was the sword. That was Esau. But now it is great. It has been perfected in this lifetime. Matter of fact, Let's get some because now this scripture makes sense. Now, when you read Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 5, it reads, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. And that's concerning how war in the ancient world was fought. You know, you had to ask to get up on your enemy. You know, and that ultimately will brought forth the strange noise, whether you thrusting him through, he crying out, or you bringing forth a war cry, or a, a sword hitting a shield, or bones cracking. That will brought forth the the garment. I mean, the the, the uh, you know the confused noise as well as the garments rolled in blood because you had to get up on your enemy. It says, but this meaning this form of war, this battle. How this war is will be fought. He said, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. See? That's talking about World War Three. But that's the fate of the so-called white man. This is ultimately what's going to submit his downfall. The destruction. That this is his fate. And the scriptures constantly talk about it. And now we're seeing it playing out in real time. You look on the news, you're hearing about Russia, this, or Ukraine, or 
Israel, Iran, these things is contributing to war and these troops being assembled. All biblical prophecy. As a matter of fact, let's go to Isaiah 34. I end off on this Isaiah chapter 34. And um I started verse 5. It reads, For my spore shall be bathed in heaven. See? So this this attack, this destruction is gonna come from the heavens, man, from the air. It's gonna be an aerial attack. Which is those missiles coming in, you know, and you seeing the missiles in this last stage to where now they're gonna look like hailstones. That what John seen in Revelation. Pretty much that last stage of that missile, which was the warhead itself. You know, and the skies are gonna be covered with those missiles, man. Because it was the creed that this whole place, Babylon the Great, will be totally destroyed. The Lord commanded the, the other nations to not spare the arrow. So the, 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 the uh, sky is going to be covered with those missiles, man. It says, Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. See? That's what it, that's, that's the target. That's who the Lord set up to show his power through. Just like how he did Pharaoh. It says, And upon the people of my curse. See? And guess what? It's that Idumia, of course, is Edom. But it's going to be that this is the this is this devil um headquarters so to speak america babylon the great so this is what a bulk of the judgment will take place this is where the script talk about the whole land being destroyed that's talking about the whole land of america from, from sea to shiny sea this whole land mass is prophesied and destined and it is really decreed from the heavens to be destroyed they'll say of the scriptures man it says the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It's, it is made with fatness and with the blood of the lambs and goats, with the fat of kidneys of rams. For the Lord have a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in Idumea. So yeah, who, whoever is left in the land, you know, ultimately is going to be destroyed. That's why we hope, you know, to be part of that number because and being in America for you know one reason is to be delivered or to be destroyed you know but it said the Lord made a sacrifice in Basra that's talking about America but how would that take place how would that judgment happen through World War III and this man's fate is written throughout the scriptures because this this is a monumental moment in history man this, this is going to go coincide with the return of Yahweh Shai so yeah, Akim, I just hope that we're edifying. I'd like to give all praise on and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Recha, Kudash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the elect that's teaching his word in our true faith and sincerity. Shalom.